In chapter 5, verse 8, you're all familiar with uh, take heed, your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him firm in your faith. And after you've suffered a little while, the God of all grace will himself restore, establish, and strengthen you. So what does the, the lion eat? What's to devour you? That probably doesn't mean your muscles, flesh, bone. It, it's your faith, I think. Now, confirmation. So the, the devil right now is in this room. He hates what's going on here. And he wants to just eat your faith. And he has all kinds of ways of sowing thoughts in your mind that cause you to see anything faith-building, I might say, as ridiculous. So he wants to eat your faith. He, if he can eat your faith and consume it and destroy it, he doesn't care what else you do. Do you remember Luke uh, 22.32? Luke 22.32. Jesus looks at Peter. And he says, Satan has demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. Now, what's that, what is that picture? So, you got a sifter here, right? And you got Peter and the sifter, and Satan wants to sift you, Peter, like wheat. So, he's got to, he pushes you through the sifter. What, what does he want to stay in the sifter or what do you call it, a sieve, or whatever the right word is. Uh, and, and what comes out the bottom? And my answer is, he just wants to push Peter through, and out comes Peter, and up here is faith. Right? I want faith out of your life. Satan has demanded to half you. I think that's what he did with Job as well. Satan comes to God and says, uh, let me just take him uh, to, to, let me just wipe out his kids. And then he won't believe anymore. And that didn't work. Let me attack his body. And he said, well, but just don't kill him. So he diseases him. And that didn't work. He kept trying to sift him and get faith out of his life with suffering, which is what the context is in 1 Peter 5, 8. And here's what Jesus said. Jesus says, I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And after you have turned, strengthen your brothers. Not if you turn. <laughs> Jesus is looking right into Peter's face and saying, okay, we're going to do a Job kind of thing here. Job wanted to sift. I mean, Satan wanted to sift Job, and I'm going to, I'm going to let him have you tonight. Up to a point and no further. Because I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. So my question is, did his faith fail? He denied him three times. He denied Jesus three times. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. And Jesus says, I'm praying that your faith won't fail. After you have turned, strengthen your brothers. And he made Peter a rock for the church. So he writes letters like this about suffering and satanic attack and faith and God's preservation of it. I don't think his faith failed utterly. Isn't it wonderful? I mean, that's just wonderful. There is such a thing as us failing. You will fail today probably in some particular way that faith would cause you to act in a, in a bold way and you don't do it, faith fails. But you haven't failed utterly. Jesus is praying for you. Romans 8. He is interceding for you at the right hand of God. And what is he asking God to do? He's asking him to do verse 5. By God's power, you are being guarded through the, the God-sustained, Jesus-sustained, Spirit-sustained faith for a salvation ready to be revealed. So that's my take on verse 5. So the, the point of verses 3 through 5 is hope, hope, hope is so strong and so fixed and so firm and so trustworthy and it's so valuable, unfading, undefiled, imperishable. 
infinitely better than anything in this world because you're an inheritor of God being born into his family and he's, he's keeping it there for you. He won't let it go away. And if you worry about whether you're going to get there because of the suffering and the fiery ordeal that's about to come upon you, don't worry. I'm going to guard your faith. Wow. That's so encouraging to me. So why am I going to wake up a Christian tomorrow morning? He's going to guard me with the instrument of faith. He's going to open my eyes to see the trustworthiness of the gospel and believe. And if he, if he left me to myself, I would not be a believer. 